Look at the size of that monitor. If that monitor turned around and bit his face, it would tear it apart. Okay, does that mean it's going to happen? No, but him holding it there puts himself in possible risk. I'm sorry, but you have no right to tell me that I can't play with a little toy drone that cannot cause any harm when you're going to be posting pictures of yourself holding basically like an alligator right next to your face. Let's do that again. Thank you. I was accused by a veterinarian and a licensed drone pilot of putting my daughter and my animals at risk. I got an idea years ago that I just wanted to feed a snake with a drone. I thought that would be an awesome idea. So just imagine a drone flying and then a snake being fed by it. I ordered a little dinky drone from China that cost me about like $35. I started flying it. I practiced flying it a lot. I felt very comfortable with it. And then I decided to try feeding a snake. When I first started doing this, some of the snakes were scared. So if you know anything about reptiles or feeding snakes is if they're scared, they're not going to eat. So I can't get a snake to eat something if it's scared. When I tried with Xena, uh, Xena is a exanthic white-sided king snake from Venan at Canadian Ophetophile <laughs> and uh, I've had her since she was a baby and she was the first snake that actually just wanted to eat from the drone and I started feeding her every single week doing this so basically every week on Monday when it was time to feed her I set up the drone and she would eat from the drone and she did this like probably like 20 times and it just became something normal fun no no issues whatsoever this, this veterinarian basically posted on his vet page that let, let's let's go through everything I'm gonna put Xena back I just wanna show you this is the snake that has eaten by drone every time she's totally healthy in perfect condition and no none of my animals have ever been hurt doing this and I would not risk I would not risk this animal's life for entertainment to me there there was no risk and we'll talk about the possible risks and stuff anyways but I want you to look at the information and then tell me what you think in the comments below, okay? As a veterinarian and a drone pilot, I cannot express how profoundly unwise this whole video is. This is how reptiles and drones get banned. So this is his opinion. Me playing with a toy drone is going to be why snakes get banned, why drones get banned. I'm going to show you a couple little clips. So first we're going to look at Camp Keenan. If anybody is into the reptile industry, they know who Camp Keenan is. And there's a video of him being bit by a monitor, the same one that we saw our veterinarian holding, and that was just a baby one. What you doing, little lady? Ah! Then we're going to look at Nerd. We're going to look at Kevin McCurley. And he's actually a keeper that I view with utmost respect. One of the best keepers in the world but he's posting videos of like 50 pound snakes attacking people
<laughs> Here we have on Animal Planet with like millions of viewers and they're showing that monitors killed and started eating their owner. After being bitten by one of his pets, Ron fails to show up for work. There were lizards around him feeding on Ron. Ron's body was laying on the floor of the apartment and I could see that his face was pretty well eaten. I could see his molars up where his ears should have been. Ron was actually still alive when the lizards started to feed on him. They took his life. Overpowered their owner, bringing down a military veteran in peak physical form. The Nile monitors had escaped while any of those families were nearby. Small children would have surely been the next target. So I'm sorry, but my little thousand subscriber channel is not going to be the reason that we lose our snakes or drone privileges when I'm playing with a little dinky toy and there's videos of actual animals that could kill, definitely kill or hurt a lot more than my drone could. So like you, you can't say that I'm the reason that we're going to lose our snake privileges when like the top breeders and the people with like thousands if not millions of followers are posting videos that are featuring much more dangerous things then we have a lady named carlina foxy who says this is disgusting people like this should not be allowed to own these animals just imagine if the snake ingested the dental floss and this would cause a horrible death. This is purely board line cruelty. Board line? I don't board, Borderline. Sorry, she can't spell. And should be banned. Treat snakes with respect. Don't make them part of si um, sick parade for cheap ratings. Should be ashamed. She raises a valid concern. Could the snake ingest the dental floss? If you can see, I don't know if you can see, uh, put it against my... So you see those knots? I took a little pinky mouse. This is a pinky mouse. I took it by the tail. I put a knot on this dental floss just around the tip of the pinky mouse's tail. What ends up happening is as the uh, drone is flying with the pinky, do you see the distance too? There's, there's a good distance from the drone and the pinky. What ends up happening is the snake takes the pinky and either the tail will break because the, the tail doesn't have enough strength in it to like jerk the plane down or anything. It would break before that would happen. Here comes the drone flying, the snake takes the mouse and then I fly the drone this way or that way. So I'm, it, the snake doesn't have enough strength to pull the drone down. And because I'm being careful, I'm there controlling the drone and making it go this way or this way. Now, once the snake has bitten the mouse, I go and pull the dental floss off. So I just pop it off and that happens within seconds of the snake grabbing the mouse. So yes, if I was to then just leave everything there, then the snake could eat the mouse and it would have a long piece of dental floss. But it's just absolutely not a concern. Snake takes the mouse, I disconnect it from the dental floss. So being concerned about the snake eating the dental floss would be as ridiculous as being concerned about the snake eating the tongs when you're feeding them. You use your tongs, you feed your snake, and then you take the tongs away. Simple. Again, th this is from the animal hospital again. Okay, I will point out a few details which explains how incredibly wrong you are. First, that toy drone weighs over 250 grams, which by law requires that it be registered and that you have a license with Transport Canada. It is illegal to fly any drone within 30 meters of anyone directly involved with flight operations. Flying a drone that close to your child is stupid and dangerous as there are no prop guards. 
you are not an experienced pilot and have and did not have visible control over your aircraft. You put the snake in physical danger and just because you have did not had an accident because of your experience or planning is due to pure blind luck on your part. So, like, first of all, the drone is not over 250 grams and we're gonna get there. It does not require a license. You are not an experienced pilot and did not have visible control over your aircraft. I'm standing like within meters of it. I have total control over it. Now the next thing that he mentions is, is really funny because he tries to get smart. He looks at my drone and he tries to find it. Okay? He says, first, the LF-609 was rated a weight of 120 grams without the battery. The battery weighs approximately 40 grams. Second, it comes with prop guards, so bloody well using them. Smashing a drone at idling throttle does not in any way determine its safety. Well, that's why I actually took my drone and flew it into my face as fast as I could, just so that you could see. Try full throttle and tell me how it feels. I just did that for you. And finally, under Transport Canada regulations, even toy drones are required to follow the guidelines is as a representative of the reptile hobby it behooves you to set a positive example as you can see it just says fold drone it is not an f609 drone it is a chinese clone, fake, toy, drone. Well, we're gonna look at the drone rules. Pilots of micro drone do not need to register their drone or get a drone pilot certificate to fly them. Pilots of micro drones are not bound by the same requirements as other drones. However, you must not operate your drone in a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or likely endanger aviation safety or like safety stuff there are a couple actual rules if you fly a micro drone you must fly safely do not put people or other aircraft in danger avoid emergency sites and restricted airspace so f class airspace i'm not allowed to fly in follow provincial territorial municipal rules now look at this you should okay so like the rest of the rules, all of the other rules are you should. So they're not actually, they're not actually laws. And we have to understand that this, this is a toy drone that cannot cause harm. Like the only way that this drone could cause harm is if I flew it into your eyeball. Or if, like let's say I took it and actually like pointed it at the snake, it would not cut the snake, it would not it might bruise the snake, but now I'm not going to do that. Let's continue. Now a guy named Ryan Alexander, so this is a different guy in this whole comment stream. Would you push the drone into your snake the same way or into your daughter's face? Even for attention, I don't believe that's how far you would go which it had the potential to do. And beyond that, if he thought it was that big, then forget people did. And perception is just as important as reality. So no, perception is not as important as reality. Because just because you see someone and think something, that doesn't mean you're right. Perception is basically like saying racism is okay, because racism is all based on somebody's perception of something. So that's totally off of course not i'm not going to take the drone and stick it into my daughter's face i'm not going to take the drone and stick it in onto my snake and that was no way what i was trying to do i was avoiding that and i would never try to do that that would be like me asking you when you're frying eggs in the morning for breakfast are you going to take that pan and stick it in your child's face of course not okay and a frying pan is much more dangerous than this drone so we have tools, we have things that we can use. I know how to fly a drone. 
you get into a car and that's dangerous doesn't mean that you're going to be driven into a wall. Yes, if you get into a car and it drives you into a wall, you're going to die. But that doesn't mean you don't get into a car and getting into a car is much more dangerous than getting hit by this drone. So he once again, and this is from a, a licensed vet who has a practice and he has his drone license. Okay, I checked. <laughs> Drones over 250 grams require a licensed pilot and registration. Under 250 grams, you're still required to follow the guidelines of 30 meters away from people and animals. Actually, I'm not. It is a you should. It is not a you must. And while you may think that I'm being an idiot, I feel that I had full control over everything. My daughter felt safe. Have, have I flown the drone a lot? Yeah. Have I ever hit you with it? No. Do you ever get scared I'm gonna hit you with it? No. Exactly, thank you. I felt safe. You saying hi? Hi. Hi everyone. Hi. Okay, are you gonna try feeding the babies? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Hi. Do you wanna hold one of the babies? Yes. Yeah. You wanna hold one of the babies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, no, you can't hold the camera. I'll let you hold the baby. Baby. Okay. Baby. No. Oh, right. Yeah, you like the white ones, the little white ones. There, be gentle. Gentle. Why? Right. Yeah. Why? Right. Why? Right. Yeah. Is that your new little baby, Gentle? Yeah, we named her Gentle. And you're nice and gentle with her. Good girl. You showing everybody? And how are you nice and gentle? Show me. <laughs> Good girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've already stated that your 180 gram drone does not need to be registered. Just a second ago, he said it did have to. So already what he's saying is not corresponding with itself. You are still required to perform safe operations. All the normal drone regulations are still in effect. Second, attaching the mouse to a drone would potentially cause it to exceed 250 grams, which require it to be registered and licensed. So I showed him a picture of the uh, drone actually weighing 55 grams and he said, please get your scale checked. The brust motors alone more than that. The battery is 40 grams, five gram mouse. Okay, so now let's do some myth busting. I have here a, a two ounce cup with water in it. Two ounces is 56 grams. I have less than two ounces in here. It doesn't even hit the line and it says it's 57 grams so it's right on it's perfect okay now since we're here let's look at how much the mouse weighs the mouse weighs three grams so i said it would weigh five it weighs three now the drone okay look the weight has gone up the drone weighs 82 grams and with the mouse 85 grams it, it was 55 grams without the battery so with the battery and the mouse the drone weighs 85 grams not even half of 250 grams so this is a toy drone it is not the drone that he thought and there's nothing wrong with my scale now this is an fpv drone it weighs 80 grams and with the battery it weighs 131 grams. So now you see that drone compared to this one? It's smaller, but it weighs more. But I wouldn't be doing the same thing with this drone that I would with this drone. What you have to understand is when we compare these two drones together, this is an actual serious drone. And this drone can fly in ways that these drones can't. So when I look at this guy's information, he does have his pilot's license and he has it so that he can fly a DJI Maverick Pro. That's a drone that flies with these characteristics and you don't need very much skill to fly them. They move up and down, side to side, and if you push a button, you can get them to spin. But they don't have something called acro mode. This drone, however, is totally different. It doesn't just fly in one direction. It flies in all directions. It can do full like 360 movements 
and it requires a solid real remote control. This is a little toy one with antennas that aren't even real. Like there isn't even like cords coming out of these things. They're fake. So this is the real deal. So here we have a guy with his drone pilot license and veterinary license that now thinks because he has an education and some pieces of paper that he knows everything. And everything that he said has not been true. He was wrong with his guess about the drone that I was using. And I don't even know if he knows what real FPV drones are. FPV drones are drones that you fly while wearing goggles, that you get to fly like an actual pilot would fly them. You can do full spins, turns, go upside down, do all that stuff. The drone that he's flying, the Maverick Pro, is just a drone made by DJI that lets you take fancy videos. Basically, this toy drone flies the same way that the drone that he has flies and the drone that he got a license for. And the only reason he needs a license is because the one that he's flying weighs more than 250 grams. Now, this drone is like flying a real drone and it would need a license if it was over 250 grams but I specifically fly under 250 grams so that I don't have to go and get a license because I don't want to have to register every drone and I like I think it's ridiculous well actually like they can be dangerous this is dangerous this is a real drone this is a toy drone and the drone that he flies and this drone is like flying is like riding a bicycle with training wheels, okay? You literally fly like this. You fly side to side, up and down. But when you fly with a drone like this, you can do like full unlimited control. You can do anything. So anybody that knows anything about FPV drones understands the difference between a real drone and a toy one. So the snake in the video is the few that survived. I mean, starting with 15, I guess eight is more than half. So you're hitting a solid 0.500 plus. If this is baseball, you would be a hero. So now I'm being accused of killing a whole pile of snakes to make one survive. I've tried this with a couple snakes. I will admit that and they were scared, so I couldn't feed them. So I didn't make them, I, you can't force someone to eat if they don't want to, right? So Xena, she started doing it, then I got bored of doing it. Because it was like every Monday I was doing it, I thought, oh, this is so exciting. But once you've done it so many times, like it's not even really exciting anymore. I got it down to, a, I think, 13 seconds. So I fed one from a drone in 13 seconds. And to me, like, that's amazing. And that's faster than some people trying to get their snake to eat with tongs. Then, uh, then someone mentioned, like, I want to see what happened after you fed the snake. So... I showed them the longer version of the videos. There's a playlist, there's three videos in it, and you can see uh, everything was fine. I showed you the snake in the beginning, you know it's good. The officer said it's okay. I've driven home drunk 10 times with no problems. Okay, so now you're comparing me playing with a toy to driving drunk. Once again, even if you're not driving drunk, getting in a car is much dangerous than playing with this toy drone. So your example, it really isn't fair. There are basically two main people that came after me. There's the doctor and there's the other guy and he's the owner of Crown Pythons. So you're going to see a picture of him with his child holding, holding a Dumeril's boa. Now you know I like snakes. We all like snakes. I think almost everyone on my channel knows we like snakes. And we understand that you can hold a big snake and that doesn't mean that the snake is going to bite you. You have snakes that you trust, that you allow your kids to hang out with or that you are with. But if we're going to talk about like me putting my child at potential danger, so maybe something could have gone wrong, okay? And maybe the drone could have somehow out of nowhere, you know, flipped sideways, dropped straight down and cut my snake or something. Or maybe like it could have flown sideways and went into my child. So like if, if we're gonna if we're gonna get mad at me for that and if we're gonna use that as our argument, look at you with your child holding the snake. That snake could just bite you in the face. Would it? I don't think it would. You obviously don't think it does because you're holding it with your kid. But that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. So if we're gonna we're gonna talk about 
accusing someone or blaming something for something that could happen, it's just ridiculous. Like, you shouldn't cross the road because you might get hit by a car. Look at that person, he's crossing the road. Like, this is the argument that I'm being accused with. So then we scroll down Crown Python's page and the first video we see is a snake striking at him or at people. Uh, there are lots of keepers that have snakes striking at them. If we look at prehistoric pets, if we look at Brian Barchuk, if we look at like the two biggest reptile people, they have videos of their animals striking at people. And those animals could cause way more damage and way more harm to a human than my little drone once again. So y you can't say that me flying my toy drone that cannot hurt you would be the reason that we lose drone privileges or reptile privileges. That has nothing to do with me playing with a toy when there are other people allowing 100 pound snakes to strike at them. Or even you holding a 20 pound or more snake. It probably weighs more, I'm just making it lighter for you to give you the benefit of the doubt. But a 10 pound snake can hurt you a lot more than a 100 gram drone. So if you are going to like blame me for playing with a toy, then I think that you shouldn't be holding your 20 pound snake with your child. And now for the vet. He's a vet. He works with animals all the time. Look at the size of that monitor. If that monitor turned around and bit his face, it would tear it apart. Okay, does that mean it's gonna happen? No, but him holding it there puts himself in possible risk. And if that monitor did turn and bite his neck or bite his ear or bite his face, then we would have a serious problem. But he's posting pictures of him holding this dangerous animal. What do you guys think? Share your opinion. <laughs> I'm pretty set in my ways, so it's just like there's nothing you can really do to tell me that I'm causing harm. So I care about my daughter more than anything, and I love my snakes. And it's just like that's a $300 snake. Even if it wasn't, even if it was a free snake, I don't hurt my animals, okay? I never have, I never will. So you can feel however you want. This is my argument. We've heard yours. Have fun in the comments. Yeah, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Now make sure you click. Take circle. Take circle. Yeah, click the circle. Yeah, I do. And then watch this video or this one. No. Yeah? No. Yes, it's not that hard. Which one appeals to you more? Is it this one? Or is it this one?